Child of Death, Black Queen, Merchant Tress, all these nicknames belong to her. One of the most powerful and imperious women in Europe of her time, she influenced all the significant events of France in the second half of the 16th century. She was loved and hated, and everyone feared the power of the Black Queen. Her mind, savvy and wisdom, allowed her to rattle her name throughout Europe both during her lifetime and for many centuries after. Her three sons were kings, but she was the one who ruled. Without her mind, power and connections, her boys could not have kept their throne. However, sometimes the right to the throne was held by this woman very cruelly. Today, we will talk about the life, wisdom and love of Catherine Medici, the Black Queen of France. We will talk about a woman with a magnificent taste, who instilled a love of delights in the French court and subsequently in the entire French people. A woman who became the legislator of Parisian fashion, about a smart and wise woman who has everything in life one could only wish for. Caterina Maria Romola di Lorenzo de Medici was born on April 3, 1519 in Florence. Her family practically ruled Florence for several centuries in a row. The famous Medici. As middling bankers, they managed to become one of the most powerful families in Europe. They were famous as patrons of the most prominent artists and architects of the Renaissance, and even the post of Pope was occupied by men from this family several times. Despite the successful origin, Catherine's childhood is difficult to call happy. Catherine's mother, Madeleine de la Tour, died a few days after giving birth, and her father, Lorenzo II Medici, died another six days later. The little girl was immediately assigned the gloomy nickname, Child of Death. The orphan girl was first brought up by her grandmother, and later with her aunt, who raised her with children, who became Catherine's siblings for life. She tried to give her niece a brilliant education, and instill good manners. At the age of 10, Catherine was taken hostage by the enemies of the Medici. She was threatened with rape and murder. Liberation was granted by the work and efforts of her uncle, Pope Clement VII. After the incident, the uncle took care of the safety of his niece and decided to marry her. The second son of King Francis II of France, Henry, became the best match for young Medici. At the age of 13, Catherine arrived in France. She did not shine with beauty. She was a thin and low-haired girl with eloquent eyes. Before Catherine went to France, the master from Florence was instructed to create elaborate high-heeled shoes for her, which was a kind of know-how for France for that time. When Catherine appeared in these unique shoes, it produced the effect of a bomb that exploded. With this technique, Catherine killed two birds with one stone, compensated for her low height and made a good impression, and interested not only the privileged circles of France, but also her future father-in-law, King Francis II himself, who immediately noted her mind and education. Everyone found her a very nice and interesting individual. The wedding took place in Marseille in the fall of 1533 and lasted over a month. Even the uncle of the bride, Pope Clement, attended. Europe has not seen such a cluster of aristocracy for a long time. In order to serve her wedding, Catherine Medici brings many skilled Florentine cooks with her, who carefully kept the ancient culinary traditions and secrets originating from the meals of the Roman emperors. They decorate dishes with a variety of sauces that have not been heard of before in France, and thus open a new great page in the history of French cuisine. It is difficult to overestimate the contribution of the future queen to the promotion of parsley, truffles, broccoli, green peas, and even many desserts, one of which is ice cream, a new kind of which was served every day. Previously, ice cream consisted only of sweets and fruit juice, Catherine's cooks, however, added milk to the dessert, creating thereby a new recipe that many people love today. A year after the wedding, Catherine's patron, Pope Clement VII, unexpectedly died, leaving her without a dowry in promised lands. Therefore, Catherine was in an unenviable position. She spoke bad French, she had no dowry, and became a hermit at court. The king himself complained that the Medici arrived to him practically naked, However, thanks to her tactical and wise behavior, she manages to return the position of her mother-in-law and Catherine's life enters the usual course. Soon, in 1536, the 18-year-old eldest son of the king, Francois, dies from a cold, and his place as heir to the throne is taken by Catherine's husband, Henry. Soon after this, 
speculations and rumors began about the poisoning of the heir by the Florentine. There were rumors about Catherine's infertility, as she could not conceive for a long time. Her husband had a son out of wedlock, whom he recognized, which means that the reason for such a long absence of children in the couple was in herself. She turns to different doctors, uses all kinds of means and recipes, but everything is in vain. And only 11 years after the wedding, in 1544, she finally gives birth to a son, named Francis II, in honor of her grandfather king. And again in France, there are rumors about secret rituals after which the long-awaited firstborn was born. The fact is that the famous doctor, alchemist, astrologer, and predictor, Michel Nostradamus, was close to Catherine Medici. It is with his magical help that the cause of such an unexpected appearance of the baby is associated. Since then, the noble couple no longer had problems with the birth of children. Four more sons and three daughters were born in their family. There could be even more heirs, but the last births of twins almost cost the Medici life, and the babies themselves did not survive. One was born already dead, the second died shortly after the birth. After that, doctors advised Catherine not to risk her life and no longer give birth. The marriage of Catherine and Henry is difficult to call a happy union. While still an 11-year-old boy, Henry fell in love with Diana de Portiers, who was 19 years older. Despite the age difference, the future king lost his head from the beauty and refined manners of Diana, and she de facto became his queen. She got all the best palaces, clothes, jewelry, objects of art. She was the favorite of the French Beaumont. In 1547, after the death of King Francis, Henry II and Catherine de Medici became rulers of France. Catherine mourns sincerely. She and her father-in-law had a great relationship. He appreciated a smart interlocutor in his daughter-in-law and admired her ability to stay in the saddle and the skills of a magnificent hunter. Having become queen, Catherine turned out to be the queen only to the fact of marriage. But her much-loved husband, Henry, was accompanied everywhere by her long-standing and unchanged rival, Diana de Poitiers. Diana influenced Henry's decisions in the management of the state, made public appearances with him, and she had great power and actually took the place of Catherine. What did a wise wife do? Having coped with feelings and swallowed her pride, she decided not to enter into an open conflict with Diana, but on the contrary, made friends with her. Two smart ladies benefit greatly from this friendship. Diana is not worried that a beautiful young wife will stand in Catherine's place, because the Medici behaves wisely and restrained, without inflating scandals due to the connection between the king and Diana. Diana, in turn, regularly reminds the king of the need to have heirs from a legitimate wife, because divorce scares the favorite no less than Catherine herself. And so they live. Catherine entertains the beloved king with intellectual conversations, instills in the court a love of glass and ceramic dishes brought from the Italian city of Faenza, later called the Faience, introduces pantalones and corsets into fashion, which will be loved by great ladies for another 350 years, instills alternate serving of dishes, after which such a concept as dessert appears. Before the Medici, the tables of the French monarchs were all at once. Thanks to Catherine, many new desserts also appeared. The fashion for magnificent collars helped the Medici train the king and his entire retinue to forks. Before the Black Queen, the French privileged circles ate mainly with their hands. Suddenly, in 1559, the situation changed dramatically when at the next tournament, the king decided to fight, contrary to the exhortations of Catherine. The enemy's sphere knocked out the king's left eye. The wound was severe. The spear hit the brain. The best doctors of that time tried to save Henry, such as the legend of world surgery, Ambrose Pear. But everything was in vain, and having spent 10 days in agony, the king died, leaving ruthless Catherine a widow. After his death, Catherine did not take revenge on Diana. She only forbade her to appear at court and forced her to return the jewels of the crown and the famous castle of Chenonso, king's gift to Diana, subsequently rebuilt by Catherine. New gardens, columns, statues, triumphal arches and obelisks appeared in it. Diana lived 67 years of happy life, admiring others with her beauty and youth. Catherine, deeply grieving for the deceased spouse, wears mourning, which will be worn from now on until the end of her days. Contrary to tradition, 
Having deeply felt the energy and essence of color, the Medici first puts on a black mourning dress instead of white, as was customary before. For this, she receives another dark nickname, the Black Queen. The evidence of Catherine's love for the late Henry is also the fact that after the death of her husband, she did not have a single lover. Evil tongues attributed many vices to her, but no one could blame her for libertinage. Widowhood firmly entered her life. On the day of her husband's funeral, she broke up with her femininity until the end of her days. After the death of her husband, Medici has a new status, the Queen Regent. The first to ascend the throne was her eldest son, Francis II, who at that time was 15 years old. He was not ready to rule the state. Therefore, Catherine had to assume all the duties of governing the country. Before reaching the age of 17, her son, King Francis, died of a brain injury disease. Then power passed to her 10-year-old son, Carl, who suffered from violent seizures and indomitable aggression. In fact, all the years his mother has ruled the country as regent. At 23, Charles IX dies of pleurisy. The time of the regency of Catherine under Charles is marked by the dark spot of Bartholomew's night. France suffered from prolonged civil religious wars. Catholics and Huguenot Protestants supported the power and money of the most influential houses of the kingdom, did not stop the mutual bloodshed. The Protestants had their own armed army, wealth and ties in higher circles. It was unreasonable to fight them, and Catherine, being herself on the side of the Catholics, reasonably concludes the Peace of Saint-Germain, giving Protestants freedom and the right to worship. This was not only a religious confrontation, but also the strongest struggle of the clans for power. In order to finally reconcile the warring parties, Catherine decided to marry her daughter, Margarita, to the Huguenot Protestant prince, Heinrich Nawarski. The wedding took place contrary to the disapproval of the Vatican, and noble guests gathered for the celebration in Paris, representatives of the two warring parties. However, the long-awaited reconciliation was not destined to take place. During the stay in the capital, an insidious attempt was made on the eminent Huguenot Gaspard Colony. Feeling that a bloody answer awaits the Catholics for this attempt, the Medici acted proactively, and by order of Catherine and the King's son, on the night of August 24, 1572, on the eve of St. Bartholomew's Day, a massacre of Protestants began. At the beginning, Catherine wanted to only get rid of the highest ranks of the Huguenots, but the massacre got out of control, and the raging executioners killed about 30,000 Huguenot Protestants. From now on, the glory of a cruel and dangerous ruler who wants to hold on to power, no matter the cost, is firmly entrenched in her throughout Europe. After the death of Charles, Catherine's most beloved son, Henry III, ascended the throne. He was an adult, healthy, and no longer needed serious help in leading the country like his previous brothers. Catherine performed diplomatic duties and occasionally gave her son important advice on managing the state. And as once she did for her beloved husband, Catherine began to entertain her beloved son with balls. The Italian bout Zarini, invited by her for the sake of one of these feasts, came up with the Queen's Comedy Ballet, in which music and dance were combined into a single plot. In many ways, this served as the further formation and development of ballet as an art. In 1584, her youngest son Francois died. He was 29 years old. For mother, it was a hard blow. Catherine Medici dies in the city of Blois on January 5, 1589, at the age of 69 from pleuritic disease. Religious wars continue in the country. After the death of Medici, Paris is ruled by the enemies of the crown. Catherine is buried in Blois. Her body will be reburied in the family crypt in the Paris Abbey of saint denis en lye after 21 years. In 1793, during the French Revolution, her remains, like those of other queens and kings, were thrown into a common grave. Eight months after the death of his mother, her son Henry III was stabbed by a religious fanatic. Of all Catherine's children, only Margarita managed to live to 62 years old. Henry III lived 37 years, the rest died before reaching 30. Catherine was a unique woman, ahead of her contemporaries in the way of thoughts and advanced ideas for many centuries to come. She was a woman of state mind, without whose separate advice none of her sons would last on the throne for even a year. She constantly discouraged her sons from war and violence, but, if necessary, 
turned into a cold-blooded politician capable of delivering the first fatal blow. She was a woman of fashion, a lover of fine arts, a magnificent interlocutor, an enlightener, a skillful rider, an innovator, a loving wife, and a tender mother.